Good afternoon and welcome back on the campus of Johnson County Community College. Game two of our doubleheader between Johnson County and the Yosho. And an important game on sophomore day here at Overland Park. Johnson County currently the two seed in Region 6 play. But just a game separates them from the number one seed, Allen County, and the number three seed, Kansas City, Kansas. Coincidentally, Allen County taking on KCK this afternoon as well. So a monster game right now with big-time implications. If Johnson County can win, the worst they can be is the number two seed after today, or they could be in a potential tie for the one seed. And guess who's left on Johnson County's schedule? That's right, Wednesday they take on Allen County. That is a potential matchup to determine the one and two seeds in the Jayhawk Conference standings. With two games to go in the regular season, every game is important. Playoffs just around the corner, and Johnson County taking on a Neosho team desperate for a win. Panthers just 2-10 and ten inside Jayhawk Conference play, 10-16 and 16 overall. Meanwhile, Johnson County, like I mentioned, hanging tough with the top of the conference, 9-3 and three inside Region 6 play, 21-7 and seven overall. The starters first for the Osho behind head coach Taylor Schaefer in just his first season. His starting five looks like this. Ezra Vagapa, a 6-1 sophomore from New Zealand, will run the point, averaging four points, four assists per game. Joining him in the backcourt, a six-foot sophomore from Australia, Michael Odingo, averaging nine points and shooting at 38% clip from beyond the arc. Alexander Norris, one of the leading scorers on this unit, a six-foot, three-inch sophomore from Wichita, averaging 12.5 points, four rebounds. Tremont Willis Shaw, 10 points, four boards. He stands six foot eight, a sophomore from North Carolina, and inside making his first start of the season for the Osho. Jordan Willis, a 6'10 freshman from Sydney, Australia, averaging three points, three boards per game, is the starting five for Neosho. So they've got some size going 6'10, 6'8 inside. And for Johnson County, on the other side behind head coach Grant Chapel in his third season, a different starting lineup this afternoon as they do get Xavier Kahube back on the floor. He is not in the starting lineup, however. Timer Jackson, 6'2", sophomore from Olathe North, starting once again, averaging 20.8 points a game, leading all players in Region 6 and shooting a better than 46% from beyond the arc. Joining him in the backcourt, though, the point guard will be Desi Williams back in the starting lineup today. 5'11", sophomore, of course, from Park Hill South High School, averaging 8 points, 2 assists per game. The other guard in this backcourt, Josh Jordan, a 6'2 sophomore from Salina, Kansas, averaging four points, four rebounds per game. Of course, Ryan Gordon gets the start again, 6'6 sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas. He was named Jayhawk Conference Player of the Week last week after a phenomenal week, averaging 16 points, six and a half rebounds. And Kyler Mann getting the nod in the starting lineup this afternoon. 6'5 freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, averaging six points, five and a half rebounds. And again, we have not seen Xavier Kahube in a few games now. The last time we saw him out on the floor was in that road victory against Labette. He didn't appear in the Heston game, didn't play in the Highland game. And now we flip the page to Neosho Kahube. Back on the bench, will not start today, but we do expect him to play. He's got a bandage right now over that right cheek. Don't know if he's a full go or not, but he is expected to play. So Kahube back in Johnson County in a must-win game with important standings on the line. The tip is controlled by Neosho, and those all-blacks going left to right. Johnson County and the all-whites will go right to left in this first half. I am Tim Sproul. Here's Jim Bly. Thank you for joining us on the U this afternoon. The first matchup between these two teams was a tight one at Neosho. A 74-69 victory for Johnson County on that day. And the first miss of the day is boarded by Timer Jackson. Jackson had 22 points, 5 rebounds in that victory back on February 1st. On Wednesday, Timer Jackson put up 20 points, 5 assists. And Kyler Mann gets the first two of the game. Again, he was the unorthodox starter today. Has not started a lot of games this year for Johnson County, but he does get the nod this afternoon. This one through the hands of Jordan Willis as he gets shoved to the ground by Desi Williams. Again, Willis making his first start of the year. Freshman from Sydney, Australia, stands six foot ten. 
He's only averaging three points, three, three rebounds per game. He's only averaging nine minutes a contest. So he has not been used a lot. Straight away three is rounded off. The 6'10 Willis has got his first rebound of the game. Vagafa hands off to Willis inside. First two for the Australian, and this is a starting lineup that is from all over the world. <laughs> two in this starting lineup hail from Australia, one from New Zealand. They've got a player from Canada that comes off the bench as Desi Williams gives Johnson County the early two-point advantage. How about the Johnson County baseball team working on a sweep, doubleheader sweep today, up 4 nothing right now in the bottom of the third, Tim. They walked off game one and lead early in game two. Turnaround jumper to a good Kyler man on the board. Jackson stepping back, little floater in the lane goes for timer Jackson. Again, Jackson, another 20-point outing on Wednesday in the 79-52 victory at Highlands. Three ball is short, an air ball, trying to save it, but it goes right to Kyler Mann. And now Ryan Gordon gets bumped going up, and he will go to the line. How good has Ryan Gordon been recently? Again, named Jayhawk Conference Player of the Week last week. In a week where he averaged 22 points and nine boards, he had 27 against LeBet last week. That was a career high for Ryan Gordon. Forty-two, forty, uh, seventeen, oh four to go in the KU West Virginia game. Virginia up. <laughs> Ryan Gordon splits the trip, and that comes the Osha. Gordon denies it at the rim. And then on the other end, Timer Jackson on the break. <laughs> Ryan Gordon sent it away at the summit, and just like that, it's a seven-point Johnson County lead. Not even three minutes in, and another steal. Kyler Mann for Jackson. And the lead is nine in the first time out. Not even three minutes in. Johnson County is running out of the gate in this one. 11-2 early on. Cavaliers have jumped all over the Panthers here in Overland Park. What a start defensively. Ryan Gordon, the block, couple of steals. Some early Neosho turnovers creating some fast break opportunities for Johnson County in the early going. And Timer Jackson, just like that, has six points. Again, leading scorer in Region 6 this year is Timer Jackson. Averaging just shy of 21 a game, he has had some monster outings. This is a good way to start. Get a couple of momentum buckets in transition. And this is what Johnson County has done in the last couple of weeks. They have jumped on opponents and put them away early. They were up big on Highland at halftime Wednesday. And again, Highland really never threatened in that second half. It was a 27-point win for Johnson County. Norris will fire from the corner. Another offensive board underneath for Willis. He can't finish the reverse. And the Panthers struggling early on the offensive end. Man somehow gets a deflected pass. Timer Jackson rolls it in. He's got eight early on. The sophomore guard from Olathe North filling it up early. Eight of the 13 for Johnson County. Man, another board. Desi Williams, who has played a lot better over this recent stretch, will fire straight away. And back come the Panthers. Again, he's seen his points average just steadily increase as his time has increased. And, I mean, that's... Sort of a simple assumption that it'll happen, but again, he's been a lot more aggressive on the offensive end in the latter half of the season. 
And again, he's seen his minutes increase dramatically as the year has gone on as well. End of the shot clock here. They just get it off. It grazes the front iron. Neosho still looking for answers on the offensive end. Jackson will fire. Off the mark on his first three look of the day. He hadn't shot a three until right then, and this three on the other side is too strong from Trayvon Willis-Shaw. Williams got all the way to the rack, just left it a little short, and the Panthers trying to run. This team shoots a lot from beyond the arc as Willis is short on the three ball. They're 12th in the country in three-point attempts per game. They shoot more than 27 threes a game. As a team, they're only shooting 31% from beyond the arc, though, as Ryan Gordon muscles in two more. Never fear KU is in the lead again. <laughs> oh, I wasn't worried. <laughs> Early 13-point lead. Neither team yet to go to the bench. Willis can't finish the follow. Another empty trip for Neosho. One bucket with nearly six minutes gone. Jackson off balance, hitting. Simer Jackson's already in double digits with 10, and it is worth noting that Neosho right now is the eighth seed. They are the final seed, so if Johnson County were to vault into the number one seed, this is potentially that first round matchup. And here's a strip from behind by Willis Shaw. Who gets it right back wide open from beyond the arc. That one off the mark as well. Nothing falling for Neosho so far in this one. The one basket was off of an offensive rebound. Jordan Willis, the 6'10 freshman, followed in one from right underneath the basket. But other than that, Neosho hasn't had anything go right on the offensive end. They've had a lot of open looks from beyond the arc as well. But again, as a team, they're only shooting 31%. They have just been off target so far in this game. Norris fading away. And the lid stays on the basket on this end of the floor. Again, it was just a five-point victory for Johnson County last time these two teams played. Gordon, the reverse, got his own miss, and he'll go to the line. In that game, Neosho shot 41% from the field, 23% from beyond the arc. But so far, sitting on a goose egg from beyond the arc. We got timeout, 12.33 to go first half. All Johnson County early on the U. <laughs> 